So I'm doing a video showing how to connect Mixing Station Pro on an Android tablet to BCF2000. Now what we need to do is make sure the BCF2000 is in the right control mode. So we want it in Mackie control mode. This isn't. So to do that we switch it on while holding this button. And then I connect this to the tablet. I've got a USB cable and a USB on the go adapter. Tablet, of course, needs to support USB on the go. I'll plug it in here. And I'm using Mixing Station in offline mode because I don't actually have the X32 with me here. To make Mixing Station work with this, you need the Pro version and you need to switch USB MIDI on. You may well need to reconnect it there. Every time you start mixing station with the BCF connected, you'll get this dialog. This is Android asking whether the app is allowed to access a USB device. You can tick a box to say use by default. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to do any good. It asks every time. Android mixing station doesn't have any default mapping for controlling MIDI device and the BCF2000 also has the behaviour that if you move a fader, if it hasn't received any MIDI events, it thinks the correct position for the fader is still wherever it was before. So you can get a little game, but that's about it. To add a mapping we have to go into Setup MIDI and add a controller. I'm going to add a fader first. If you press the Learn button, every time you move a fader, or any of the other controls, we see different values here coming up. So for a fader, we're seeing pitch on channel 1 for this fader, and some value under pitch for channel 2, it's channel 2 for channel 3, channel 3, and so on, up to channel 8. Channel 2 is channel 2 for channel 3, channel 3, and so on, up to channel 8. So we're wanting to set up this fader first. So it was pitch we were seeing, it was 1. We're not looking for a specific value of the pitch, it's any value, and minus 1 means any value. Because it will move back unless the BCF2000 receives an event, we need the output mode to be on MIDI event and change. So what that means is on us moving the fader it will send a MIDI event back so the fader should stay in the right position and change means also if you change layer or change a scene preset on the X32 it will also send a, the MIDI signals here. Once Mixing Station knows which control it's controller it's talking to, we need to connect that to an action. I'm going to go with current layer, offset zero, so that means the left hand most fader that we see on the screen, main fader, I'm going to select use sense on faders. So hopefully now we go back to the main screen, we have a fader here, move, moving the fader on the screen, and if I move the fader on the screen, it moves the fader in real life as well. So that was our fader mapping. I can add another one for button. I'm going to call this one mute one. I'm going to learn this button. So it's note on off, channel one, note twenty-four. Velocity is either 0 or 127 and for and B. For buttons it does do the right thing and says on note up and change. Again, current layer, offset 0, main, on, use sends on fader. And for mute, I believe you need to invert it. If you don't invert it, what you'll get is the LED on here, meaning the channel is open and the signal is coming through. So that's a bit like Yamaha desks where it's labelled on rather than me. But to be consistent with what's on screen, we've inverted that output. 
we can do that again for another button. This will be solo on channel one. I'm going to learn that. Add the solo action. And we don't need to invert this. So now you see the LEDs and what's on screen match. Just for this one channel, see all the other channels aren't mapped yet. I'm going to add a rotary. So this rotary controller, we learn, you see that gives us CC. We turn it anti-clockwise, we see values 65 and upwards. It gets higher the faster I turn it. For clockwise it's 1 or higher if I turn it higher. And that's the mapping here. So ink value, so going up is 1, deck value is 65. So this is right mapping, again, value per MB. Unfortunately, there's no... I have never got it to control the LEDs around the ring here. It doesn't seem to know how to do that. Oh, I forgot to add, add the action, so I select the controller. You see, these ones are controlling the channel level on solo. This one I want to add. Current layer, offset zero, main, pan. You send on faders. So now, if you look at this pan control, I can adjust it like that. Now you might not want pan, you might want compressor threshold or something like that. I'll show pan here because it shows up fairly easily on the display. So there we've got all the controls for one channel. I've got sends on faders here, and because I have had use send on faders enabled, it's following sends on faders, I can even do the mute. This works even if I go into another view. Or if I go to another chart layer, it's all following that. So we've done one channel, we could repeat seven times over for the remaining seven channels. But I'll show you another way of doing that. We'll exit mixing station because I want to make sure that doesn't write to the file. Because I'm going to open the file in a text editor. I'm using Jotter Plus. You can use pretty much any text editor. And it's in the internal storage mixing station. And you want the reconnect 001.mmp, so MIDI mapping. This lists all of the controllers that we've just configured, so the fader and the mute button, solo and rotary one, which is pan. What I can do is to copy and paste this text and then modify just the channel numbers to make it map for the next set of controls. So I'll paste it there, go back and find the fader. So for each of the name, source is the channel offset on the current layer. And for the fader, I want to change the channel. Now the tricky bit is for the mute and solo, you want to change the name and the source, but it's param A, not channel. We need to change. We need to just add one to it, basically. So for the buttons, it's param A. Change 16 to 17. This is the pan control. Again, param A for the rotary controls. Save that. 
go into mixing station. Wait for it to talk to the MIDI device. So we've got one fader and there are hopefully two faders both working with the button mappings and the solos. No working. So I got one of them wrong a bit. It's always worth checking every single mapping. I think I forgot to change its mapping here. Oh, okay, so this was set to current channel. So there's various types you can do here. Really, we want current layer solo for this. And this one's probably wrong as well. Yeah channel should be covered there. So it's a little bit fiddly to get them all right, but once you've got them all right, you can then in the text editor copy over for the rest of them. As well as the eight buttons here, we have a few other things that act like buttons. So we've got these, which I've got mapped to mute and solo, but each of these rotary encoders you can also press, and that gives you another channel. There's also two shift buttons, so while this is mute and solo, if I press shift, these give us another set of MIDI channel notes, and here again. 54, 62, and obviously these would just go up by one for each of the channels. So by pressing shift here, you can get another bunch of on-off controls. I don't believe it makes any difference to the rotary encoders or to the faders, unfortunately. So it's really only shifting these buttons as far as I'm aware. And obviously, you've got all these other buttons here, so we can learn one of these. Uh, so for example, this one I have mapped to the USB, so this opens the USB player. And pressing it again takes us back to the home screen. So that's a nice little shortcut. In terms of what button, what actions you've got, there's quite a lot of them. You can do if you're if you have a control surface as well, and you're selecting the current channel. You have a whole bunch of controls to the current channel. Current layer we saw. You select the offset uh, for each of the for channels. You've got the main configuration, low cut, delay cut, delay on. The actions you see here are different according to whether you've got a rotary a fader versus a button, assign to channels, switch on phantom power, everything can switch on and off. There's, you can have it for controlling scenes or cues or snippets for current, next, go, etc. If, you, if you're using those heavily, you can use it to select layer, either a specific layer, like one of these, or have a pair of buttons for previous and next. These two make a lot of sense because these two are the only buttons that don't have LEDs built into them. You can select a sense on fader layer or off previous next if you want to page through them. Talkback if you want to use talkback mics. You can control USB player, so play, stop, record or open a view, so any of the current channels take you back to the home button, edit the scribble strip, layouts layers, just have a look through here, find all of the, uh, find what you want really. So there you go, that's two faders and obviously you could do the rest either by learning or using the text editor to set up all of the mappings. If you have any questions, let me know and maybe I'll do another YouTube video.